I wanted to talk about corn today. I tried growing corn multiple times, I think like five times, and I failed horribly, miserably, and I wanna share with you guys um, what changed it last year. What I did differently last year that actually um, we got a good harvest last year with corn. Now there are different types of corn that you can get. There's obviously the sweet corn for fresh eating that you could find at the grocery store. Um, the one that did amazing for my area, I'm in Florida where humidity and bugs are enemy number one for your crops. It's um, Silver Queen. I have tried many others that did not fare out that well in my area. Now if you live in a better zone that I do with less complications, maybe those corns will do well for you. But if Silver Queen did great for me, it might do great for you also. And then you have your storage um, corn, your dense corn. The corns that you're gonna let dry in the husk while um, you're growing them. Now why would you wanna buy um, and grow dense corn? Well, you can grow and make your own masa, your own grits, your own cornmeal, your own feed for your animals. Now, dense corn is way easier to grow in my own personal experience than sweet corn. Um, dense corn, I put in the ground um, with no fertilizer. I had just put um, some soil down and I put it right when my rainy season was starting and I, I didn't have any need for fertilizing these. And this is what I got. No fertilizer, I didn't even water. I just let the rain do all the work. And I grew them um, through the start of our heat wave. So I put them in the ground around June, early June, and I let them grow to, I think I harvest them in August or late August. So the entire hot season um, with very little watering in between, um, and then I just let I just let God do the work for me. Um, if you have a drought, I suggest you water them as much as you can, but you can get away with no fertilizing. Now the only thing with growing corn, if you're gonna grow sweet corn and you also wanna grow dense corn, is that you're eating the seed. So. If they cross pollinate, you might have a dense corn mix in with your sweet corn if you don't separate them enough. What I try to do is I try to grow all my sweet corn <clears throat> in the beginning of the season. And then once my rainy season comes, I'll put in, um, I'll start my seeds indoors. So that gives them a head start. And then once my I pull my other corn out, I'll put in my dense corn. Now with my dense corn, I just put some compost, um, you know, like the $2, $3 bags at um, Lowe's or Home Depot, some compost down and I don't fertilize at all. I just let them grow through even summer in Florida. So I put them in basically like around late May, my dense corn. And then I just let them be. I let them, you know, around May, June, July, August is our rainy season, like June. Um, so it's perfect timing for your dense corn because the rain is gonna fertilize your corn. Now sweet corn on the other hand likes a lot of heavy fertilizers. Now I've seen a lot of people put heavy, heavy fertilizers on their crop, which no judgment but I'm trying to grow as organically as possible. That being said, I tried growing corn organically and failed. So last year I did put um, the Jacks 2020, 20, three times, um, once a month. And I did put um, some blood meal in between and you know, azomite and all the other extra um, organic fertilizers that I had. Now, I am very poor at fertilizing my crops. So that tells you how much I fertilize, and fertilize my corn. Like I said, I fertilize maybe once a month and maybe in between, I would put just throw whatever dry, you know, granule fertilizer that I had here. But the key point of growing corn is water water and water and water now if you don't want to grow your dense corn grow a bunch of sweet corn but grow it in the rainy season so that all the nitrogen full rain it's gonna fertilize your corn and 
no need to put so much heavy fertilizers in your soil because I believe that if you put, you know, some synthetic fertilizers a couple of times, won't harm your soil. But if you continue to put heavy, heavy synthetic fertilizers, it's gonna end up killing all your good microbes and your biology, um, soil biology, because it is very heavily, heavily salted. I mean, synthetic fertilizers are high content salt and a bunch of chemicals. So yeah, I wouldn't heavy fertilize for corn. Now, I do like to save my own seeds. If you follow my channel, I like to grow mainly heirloom or open pollinated seeds because I do want to save my own seeds. I, wanna, I don't want to depend on, you know, companies if they have the kind I like or not, or, you know, for some reason we cannot get any more seeds. Um, I like to save my own seeds. For sweet corn, they do have um, open pollinated ones so that you can save seed and obviously they're your heirlooms this another corn that you can grow is popcorn i'm doing that one this year as well hopefully it goes well for me now i don't have any insight on popcorn because it's my first time that i'm gonna try growing it but i'll let you guys know how it goes but i've definitely had success growing dense corn and sweet corn so give it a try you want to grow in blocks and i'll show you right now how far apart i have grown them and i have had a decent amount of harvest so once my tomatoes are done in the rows, here's where I'm gonna put all my dense corn, my Jimmy Red that you saw me holding. But over here is where I grew it last year. In this row and in this row, it's probably like three feet by six feet. So if you could just put them in blocks, it, it'll, so they could properly pollinate, that'll be perfect. Now for spacing, here is the tricky part. I did pretend this one is a corn. I did them on zigzag. So from right here, then right here, and then you come over here like a zigzag. And then again up here, and you put them like a zigzag. Now this is around six inches apart, and that is how I grew my corn. And make sure that you are watering your corns appropriately don't let your soil go too dry because then the corn is gonna get stunted or stressed and then you're gonna have very very short corn stalks you can also put drying beans um once your corn reaches about a foot height you can put um dry beans i did black beans one year so they could um coil on top of your corn but to harvest them and process them it was pretty tedious so i don't think i'll be doing that this year i think i'm just gonna put them all in a kettle panel my drying beans but you could definitely do bush once your bush beans are completely dry you know just pull the whole plant out and just remove the dry beans but once it once they start coiling up your corn like you have to like individually and then remove them and it was all itchy and i just don't think it's worth the trouble but grow corn this year okay so one last thing um the bugs are gonna want to come and eat your corn just like you want to eat your corn the bugs are gonna want to live in your corn eat your corn poop on your corn and everything in between <clears throat> have babies in your corn <laughs> so make sure you have bt or spinosad available and once you start seeing like a little munching on your leaves make sure you spray it once a week if you have a heavy infestation spray on constantly maybe every day or every other day until you see all the worms gone once you see all the worms gone you um, spray once a week just as a preventative or if you start seeing damage again like i said i'm not very good at fertilizing and keeping with my um, bug control and make sure you put a lot of a lot of um, trap crops like sunflowers marigolds anything that's gonna attract those insects away from your corn so yeah keep the bugs away and keep your corn happy so bt and spinosad both of those are organic practices now you want to be safe even though you we are using organic practices 
insecticides um, you want to be safe with them as well because they do kill caterpillars so if you have butterfly caterpillars they are going to kill the butterfly caterpillars but just make sure you kill all those nasty army worms cut worms pickle worms all the uglies okay okay